he is a polarizing figure, but he gets big goals. Yeah, he had an unfortunate little period there when he went to Milan on loan, who we know are far from the best. Then he went to Chelsea, who were OK, but not at their best. They, they finished the season strongly with the Europa League. But at that point of the season, Sarri was searching for something. And, and unfortunately, Higuain couldn't give him what he wanted. And, and I suppose you could say the Chelsea squad couldn't give Higuain as well what he wanted. So I think it was a little bit of both. But I, I, I don't... I've never... You know, people will say, well, he doesn't score for Argentina in the big games and he doesn't do this. I think he, do, I think he is a big game player. There's no doubt about it that he is one of the most... Natural finishers mm. is out there. You can say, hey, he looks a little bit overweight. You can say, well, he's a little bit slow at doing it. He is such a clever, experienced footballer. Mm. And he's what I would just call, he's a penalty box striker. And he showed it again today. Listen, he will not be happy at not starting, but if you've got a player of his quality that can come off the bench and, and win games for you with that kind of finishing, then that's a great asset to have. We talked about it in the summer. Would he be welcome back at, at Juventus? Is he going to fit in? How is yeah. it? I mean, obviously, Moise Keane left. That was another opening for him coming in. An experienced player, he's, he could be he could be one of the big keys between them winning the league between now and the end of the season. I, I think Iguain has refound his mojo. I have to admit, yeah. I, I thought um, Juventus keeping hold of him is just a, a decision that well they had to because nobody else wanted him. I, I thought he lost his mojo. I, I'll be honest. After he spares in Milan and, and Chelsea, but coming off the bench and, and Craig's absolutely right. That, that finish was 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 something special today. I thought he took a touch too many. I thought he, he kind of stuck, uh, allowed Asamoah in to, to steal it away. But hit that ball with absolutely no backlift. Left Asamoah and Handanovic with, with, with not a single chance. It was a fantastic finish. I think we look too much sometimes. And not just... I think everybody, and not just in this show, which clearly we do, but I think in general we're always looking as analysts to pick out a big game where somebody hasn't done something. And we tend to forget how many times in other big games across a decade or so that these guys have actually done it. And I, and I think he falls into that category pretty much wherever he's been over the longer term, given him an opportunity. He's been a, a, a damn good marksman for a, for a long, long time. And listen, as I say, most players, it's difficult to suffer coming off the bench, but I think ultimately for him, that could be where he spends most of his time and how he's successful for Juventus this season. Meanwhile, for Inter, how much of a speed bump is this for their aspirations this season, Gab? I mean, look, a home defeat always hurts, when, 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 especially when it's up against uh, one of your rivals. I think there are positives uh, Conte can, can take from this. Uh, obviously, he's got the mitigating factor, no Alexis Sanchez, who at least would have been something different uh, off the bench. But, you know, even after Sensi came off, Inter kept competing. They kept driving. They kept make, trying to make things uh, uncomfortable for, for Juve. They've obviously, you know, they're obviously drinking the, the Conte Kool-Aid. Uh, the question, I think, is is one of, of quality. But you know what? It's a long season ahead, um, and you know, three points against Lecce or, or Bologna or whatever are worth just as much. And you know, if Conte can, can drill that mindset into them that to be to be relentless against the smaller teams, uh, then I think you can you know you can make up for for maybe losing some of the head-to-heads. Uh, you know, this is the challenge ahead for him, and uh, and, and I think you know. Look, they, they took on Barcelona, they took on Juventus. Both games, they come out beaten, uh, but beaten by real quality. And I think that's the difference between them just, and, uh, and, and the top teams in Europe right now. Just, just quickly, Dan, the one thing that I think... I looked at this game and I think, and, and, you know, I'm not... I think it could be a problem for them, depending on how many games he plays. Is Diego Godin playing, at times, on the right side of a three? Right. Primarily because he's always... He's generally, for his career, played in a back four and he's able to tuck a full back in beside him but you can get when if D'Ambrosia goes belting forward there you can get exposed in that position particularly at his age and I think that and look at those first couple of goals the Dybala one not necessarily his fault but it came down over that top and then you had Ronaldo cutting in from the right hand side there's just a couple of things I think that exposes his lack of pace not lack of experience or lack of quality but I think that position in a back three just exposes his lack of pace and age potentially over the course of a season. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.